parent company of Fox News has launched an internal review following a sexual harassment lawsuit against the network's powerful boss. Former anchor Gretchen Carlson alleges she was fired after turning down sexual advances from Fox News chairman and CEO Roger Ailes. Vinny Denier is here with the accusations of pervasive harassment and also the response. Vinita, good morning. Good morning. Carlson's bold accusations against the media mogul came just two weeks after her last day at Fox News. But Ailes immediately fired back, saying her accusations were false. This America is Gretchen Carlson, Miss Minnesota. For more than a decade, the former Miss America was one of the most recognizable faces of Fox News. And hi, everyone. I'm Gretchen Carlson. But on Wednesday, Carlson filed a lawsuit against company chair and CEO Roger Ailes, alleging he sabotaged her career. In an eight-page document obtained by CBS News, Carlson claimed she was fired because she refused his sexual advances and complained about severe and pervasive sexual harassment. It goes on to say that Ailes described her as a man-hater and a killer who tried to show up the boys on Fox & Friends. When she complained about the discriminatory treatment, she claims he said, I think you and I should have had a sexual relationship a long time ago. But in a statement to CBS News, Ailes denied the accusations and said he would defend them vigorously, saying Fox News provided her with more on-air opportunities over her 11-year tenure than any other employer in the industry, for which she thanked me in her recent book. In Carlson's 2015 book, Getting Real, she thanked Ailes for continuing to believe in me and giving me the opportunity to do what I love every day and described him as the most accessible boss I've ever worked for. Before her tenure at Fox News, Carlson spent five years here at CBS News. We were unable to reach her for comment, but on Twitter she posted, I value your support and friendship, so please stay in touch. Of course, one of the big questions people will be asking, is there any past? Are there any other, other women? Sure. Apparently, Carlson's lawyer spoke to the New York Times and said, some other women have come forward, but none of them want to be named at this point. Tell me, first of all, why you've decided to speak out. Elizabeth, I think that I went through such hell for so many years. I finally felt safe when I saw that other women were, were speaking up. For decades, Lori Loon was one of Roger Ailes' closest associates. They met when she was 28 years old, working on George H.W. Bush's first presidential campaign. Ailes, already a powerful media consultant. I wanted to meet him. I wanted to work for him. I was so excited. I introduced myself to him on the elevator. Lori says Ailes invited her for an interview with his firm. I think that he wanted to gauge you know, what kind of a person I was, if I was insecure, if I was looking for a daddy figure. He was sussing out your vulnerabilities? Absolutely. And I was real insecure. Ailes offered her work doing research, but according to Lori, it became clear that he was interested in more than just her work when he asked her to meet him at his hotel room one night. Roger would come to town periodically and expect me to um, do whatever he told me to do. Like what? What would he tell you to do? He said that I needed training. 
You needed training? Lori says Ailes told her to strip down to her lingerie and dance for him. He would have me get down on my knees and tell me, you're going to do whatever I tell you to do at any time. He said that I needed training. You needed training? He would have me get down on my knees and tell me, you're going to do whatever I tell you to do at any time. Do you understand that? Lori says Ailes then instructed her to perform a sex act on him. I didn't question it, and that's the big, that was his big thing. Just don't ever question anything I ever asked you to do, Laurie. According to Lori, that bizarre night was no aberrant incident. Their secret relationship continuing off and on for more than 20 years. Lori too afraid to tell anyone. You know people hearing this will say, why on earth would you go along with this? It's not like I was able to go and consult or cry on the shoulder of some friend. I was completely isolated. I was isolated in the workplace. What did you think would happen to you if you complained or tried to refuse? Have you ever seen Roger Ailes when he's unhappy? It's not a good sight to see. It's pretty scary. Tanteros claims the harassment was widespread, alleging Fox News operates like a sex-fueled playboy mansion-like cult, steeped in intimidation, indecency, and misogyny. Alleging Fox News operates like a sex-fueled playboy mansion-like cult, steeped in intimidation, indecency, and misogyny. The Fox News commentator also alleging former CEO Roger Ailes would often ask her to twirl and show off her body in his office and would inappropriately pry about her personal life. In her lawsuit, Tanteros alleges she refused his advances and was consequently demoted and told by network executives that she needed to let this go and that Ailes was a very powerful man. So you just heard Fox lawyers calling you there an opportunist. They say that your lawsuit is a retaliation for being suspended over a book you published this year. What do you say to that? Well. I had been complaining about sexual harassment and retaliation, Amy, a year before the scandal even broke out at Fox News Channel. Um, the first to complain. Before Gretchen Carlson. Before Gretchen Carlson. And my complaints crescendoed about harassment and retaliation. And when they got to a fever pitch, that's the point where all of a sudden they made up this pretext that I had violated a book contract. You complained about him, you say, last year. But yes. in your book, it's important to note, tied up in knots, you wrote, I'd like to thank Roger Ailes for seeing in me early on the socio-political tour de force I've become. Why did you publicly thank him in your book and then name him, your, him in your lawsuit now? You had to thank Roger Ailes or your book didn't get published. For which she thanked me in her recent book. In Carlson's 2015 book, Getting Real, she thanked Ailes for continuing to believe in me and giving me the opportunity to do what I love every day. Your lawyer says you were already offered a seven-figure deal to right. settle this lawsuit. Roger Ailes is out. He's gone. Mm -hmm. So what do you want? Well, first of all, the seven-figure lawsuit would have had me renouncing my sexual harassment complaints, one. Two, they wanted me to publicly admit lie basically to the public and say that I violated my book contract, which I didn't do, so I wasn't going to lie. And three, they wanted to guarantee my internal silence, which was never going to happen. What they don't have is accountability. So and that's what is accountability to you? Well, I think a culture change at Fox News is in order. What they don't have is accountability. So what is accountability to you? Well, I think a culture change at Fox News is in order. It's a culture of misogyny and sexism. And if you get vocal about it, if you get loud, uh, they will act punitively. Well, you're getting loud indeed. She also accuses Bill O'Reilly, among several other on-air contributors, of having harassed her and said that Ailes' successor, Bill Shine, repeatedly tried to intimidate her from complaining further. Were you sexually harassed by Roger Ailes? Yes. Well, like he said, he knew I must have some very sexy bras, and he'd like to see me in them. In the book, I have details of what he did. Not all of them, just some. I'm not looking to be salacious. Let me ask you about another book, Bill, since you're here. Another <coughs> on Fox News, Megyn Kelly has a new book coming out. Have you read it? No. I have not read it. So You're um, in it. 
I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems like if I was in a book, Bill, I might want to. I mean, I didn't even know I was in. What a book. she's saying about me, I yeah. might want to take a uh, look. Look, I'm trying to stay out of any of that kind of stuff. Uh, it doesn't pertain to my life. I wish her well. She's a very smart woman. You know, it's a very tough book environment. We'll see uh, if people respond to it. But I have not read it. But it's not a diss. I mean, it just came out. So I don't. You know, I, I'll look at it. Um, but, Bill, it just came out, but you know people, it? you could get the book early if you wanted. We, no, no, I, no, I, you know, they locked that thing down. Did they? Oh, yeah. She's um, not going to be on your show talking about it? I don't know. I mean, we'll see if she's going to be on the show or not. It's um, called the O'Reilly. But I, I want to be very candid here. I'm not yes. that interested in this. No? No, in I mean, it's all sexual harassment? Me. You're not interested in sexual harassment? I'm not interested in basically litigating something that is finished that makes my network look bad. OK, I'm not interested in making my network look bad at all. That doesn't interest me one bit. Is that what she's doing? I don't know. But I'm not going to even bother with it. I've got a I've got a country that's in a transition, a mm -hmm. political transition. All right. I've got a kid's book that I want millions of kids to look at. That's what I'm interested in. Not making my network look bad. But if your network is affected by it. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a little threat right. here. <laughs> Nora and I Not making my network look bad. But if your network is affected by it... <laughs> Excuse me, I got a little flower on your head. Are you okay? Are you okay? Nora and I have, have, have known each other forever. You guys don't want and, your And we're Irish people. Yeah. Yeah. But and I've got the I Irish heat, Bill O'Reilly. I want everybody to know where I stand on that. <laughs> Right? That's why that, you I made it stay clear. with the kids. It's nice please, round. Please, everybody Nora. can agree on. You know, I mean, look, <laughs> it's open season. Let's whack the Fox News Channel. I've had enough of it. It's a good place to work. All right, um, we do good work. We do honest work there. So I'm not going to buy into let's uh, use the Fox News Channel as a pinata. I don't think it's right. Okay. Okay. You should say what you really feel when you when you say that. <laughs> Can I just talk about this mafioso? But I did it. I did it in a civil way. Yes, you did. I was civil. Yes, you did. Or kind of. Maybe. Thank you. I just don't Thank have any eyebrows left, but you were civil. Very sad situation. Number one, and I'm just going to say this about it. I've worked for Roger Ailes for 20 years. All right. Best boss I've ever had. Straight shooter. Always honest with me. And I believe that over the years he's been in the business for 50 years, 95% of the people who have worked for Roger Ailes would say exactly the same thing that I just told you. I stand behind Roger 100%. of sexual harassment and wrongful termination after the company reports her contract was not renewed in June. She also claims her former co-host, Steve Ducey, created a hostile work environment. Fox News parent company, 21st Century Fox, announced it has launched an internal review and that it has full confidence in both Roger Ailes and Steve Ducey. Just of the day. Yeah. Uh, but look, get it coming into today, you would rather be in Hillary Clinton's spot than Trump's. What are you doing? I, I dropped my chapstick. I gotta have the chapstick. <laughs> well, I mean, should I leave it on the floor for someone else to pick up? Well, I don't know. Or you could have waited till the break. I need it. It's chapstick. I'm little, you, know, you, you have a little chapstick fe well, fetish, don't I, you? Fetish? Well, I think no. you... I think you... Do you know like, what that means? What? Chapstick? No, yes, I know it's chapstick. Look it's it a lip up. balm. I, don't I think it. that you're like a little OCD. You like to you're like your chapstick. I, I, I'm, Who yeah. carries chapstick I'm around with them? I'm taking antibiotics. I've had an ear infection, so well, I'm, I'm a sorry. Then I, I didn't mean to. So make... now America knows. No, Send I'm... remedies okay. by Twitter. Anyway, oh, there he is. There, there's Karen and Mike Pence. And Mike Pence. Fox's Shepard Smith has come out 
In an interview with the Huffington Post published on Monday, uh, denying previous rumors that former Fox boss Roger Ailes made homophobic comments in front of him and prevented him from coming out. So this is very important that he wants to say that he is now out and he's proud, and the reason why he wasn't out before had nothing to do with Roger Ailes. He says, quote, I wasn't new in the business when I came here. I'd been doing reporting for 12 years, but I wasn't old in it either. And he gave me every opportunity in the world. He never asked anything of me, but that we get it right, try to get it right every day. It was a very warm and loving and comfortable place. So he, this has been speculated on for a while. As, as a member of the LGBT community, we've, we've sort of thought he was family. Well, the big breaking news today. Shepard Smith has come out of the closet. Yes? Shep has officially announced today that, yes, he is gay. Now, the rumors have been swirling around for years. I mean, everybody pretty much knew it. Uh, if you want to know how to become an associate producer in Hollywood or mainstream media, well, that's simple. Just do what Geo did. Find somebody like Shep Smith and your career is set. Well, you know, for a few years until he finds his new lover boy. Well, during, um, in between the votes last night, Senator Flora, the stenographer... Not a streaker, fully clothed. Not a streaker, fully clothed, but had an outburst that has everybody talking. Listen to this. The Constitution would not have been written by Freemasons. They go against God. Well, that is Diane Reedy, who went to the speaker's chair, as you saw, and she was saying, praise to God, Jesus Christ. Uh, she went on to say free ma uh, something in reference to Freemasons and uh, also seemed to say something about house about how she did. Uh all right, that was a clip of Donald Trump from earlier tonight. And right after the debate was over, I spoke with the Republican frontrunner. Take a look. And joining us now, he's still number one in the polls and doing very well on the Drudge Report instant poll results. Uh, Donald Trump. Uh, she went on to say free ma uh, something in reference to Freemasons. She did. Uh, I and I have to say, I enjoy talking to you. I disagree with you sometimes. I hope you think I'm fair to you. I try to be. Um, but uh, I wish you well in the next two years. It's, it's always you know, a pleasure. Right. A free ma uh, something in reference to Freemasons. Tonight, the scandal that reached into the heart of the British establishment. It's about power. Power and the abuse of power. It's centred on Rupert Murdoch's media empire. Now, one of his editors, Andy Coulson, faces jail for phone hacking. He denied it for years and ended up in David Cameron's Downing Street. He showed wretched judgement and it will permanently damage his reputation as British Prime Minister. David Cameron's friend Rebecca Brooks has been cleared of any involvement in phone hacking and bribing public officials. Rupert Murdoch has always stood by his well-connected protege. She was a, a political animal, without a shadow of a doubt. She was able to collect the right sort of people. Three senior News of the World journalists had already pleaded guilty to criminally targeting people's private lives. Phone hacking was unleashed on the rich and the famous, but no one was off limits. Hacking doesn't just happen to celebrities, it happens a lot to real people. Your whole world is completely turned upside down. Even people under police protection weren't safe. For that information to get into the hands of journalists is potentially putting people's lives at risk. For years, the police sat on the evidence that eventually brought down the news of the world. Phone hacking was the scandal covered up by News International for years. Now Panorama reveals how police and politicians let them get away with it.